Simon says, go fish. And he did. Simon the fisherman. The stinky, sweaty life of a bachelor at sea. Simon and his brother Andrew fit in well with the fishing crowd. The fisherman's life was a rough one. It was physically demanding, requiring a certain amount of fearlessness to handle the storms at sea. Like a city construction crew in the middle of downtown in the scorching summer heat, there they were, gruff, dirty, vile, creating the meaning behind mouth of a sailor with their vulgarities. Yep, that described Simon pretty well. He was a man's man. No one was going to order him around. So why then? Why? Why did he suddenly just leave everything right there on the shore and follow a man he had met only hours earlier, leaving his whole life behind without a second thought? This man, this Jesus, knew something about fishing. They had been working hard all day without a single catch. Not only did that mean no dinner, but it meant no money. And then there's this guy who just shows up and tells them, the professionals, where to find fish. Simon knows better, but he figures he'll humor the guy. So he lets down the nets where he's told, and sure enough, wait, what's this? You're kidding me. The nets are full, so full they're beginning to break. Somehow, this man's man, Simon, knows he must fall to his knees before this Jesus. He knows in his manly gut that he needs to confess his sinfulness right then and there, from swearing to surrendering, just like that. Jesus' response to the boardwalk confession is just as surprising. Let's go fish for people now. And Simon goes. Simon was a man known for putting his foot in his mouth, but one thing that could be said about him is that when he was told go, he went. Immediately, he became a faithful follower of Jesus. In fact, he was the first to call him the son of the living God, the Messiah. He knew from the get-go that Jesus was God. Jesus renamed Simon the fisherman to Peter the Rock. Not exactly Dwayne Johnson. This rock would later become the God-ordained foundation of the church. He walked with a bold assuredness of Jesus' identity. Whether good or bad, he was often the spokesman for the disciples, and sometimes he was boldly wrong, even rebuking the almighty creator of the universe to his face at one point. But you got to give him points for confidence. In fact, the chest puffed out confidence continued with him the whole time he walked alongside Jesus, right up to the very end. Then something changed. Jesus had this bad habit of talking a lot about death, his death to be exact, and the disciples didn't like it. But they listened, and Peter listened, as Jesus told him that he would disown this man he so faithfully followed, not just once, but three times, three times before the rooster crowed. Bold, proud, Peter wouldn't hear it. Nope, not this man that he left everything back on the shore to follow just three years earlier. Never. And yet, and yet, this confident man cowered in fear at the midst of Jesus' arrest and trial. Hey, weren't you with Jesus? No, not me. I'm sure I've seen you with that Nazarene. Not a chance. I don't even know the guy. No, really. You're one of them. You're one of his followers. Come on. I've never even met him. And just like that, in the amount of time it took for a rooster to crow, this cocky, arrogant fisherman became a truly humble, obedient servant of the Savior. In his humility, in his weakness, is where he found the strength to become the rock the Messiah ordained him to be. Peter the Rock.